Hi and welcome to this channel. Today we're talking about dinosaurs and more precisely the fascinating species Tyrannosaurus rex aka the T-Rex. This dinosaur was a big carnivore which means that the T-Rex definitely wasn't satisfied just having a salad for dinner and it lived in the late Cretaceous period which is 65.5 to 68 million years ago. Even though paleontologists have found lots of dinosaur fossils, it's rare to find a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil. And because of that, there are many myths about the T-Rex because we have so little information about it. However, through the last couple of years, because technology has advanced and because we found new fossils, scientists are now closer than ever to having answers to some of these different myths about the T-Rex. So in today's episode, we're going to tackle seven of the most interesting myths about the T-Rex. But before we get to that, if you like what we're doing here, then press that little red subscribe button below and the bell next to it. That way you'll get notified and never miss a video. It is free 99 and you'll become the smartest one of your friends. Let's get to it. The first myth we're going to put under the microscope is the myth that the T-Rex was apparently covered in feathers. But before we look closer at this myth, I should probably mention again that we don't have a lot of T-Rex fossils. So scientists have had to map out the biology of the T-Rex based on a very limited amount of material. At Easter time 2012, paleontologists found a fossil of a dinosaur that was very closely related to the T-Rex, which was the Eutyranids, which means feathered tyrant. This dinosaur was 9 meters long and very hairy. And this made paleontologists mess around with the idea that maybe the T-Rex was also covered in these long hair-like feathers. However, in 2018 in the state of Montana, a T-Rex fossil was miraculously found. And this discovery showed that the T-Rex was covered in scales and not feathers. This was determined thanks to an imprint fossil of the animal's skin by its bones in the neck, back and tail. Every scale was about a millimeter in diameter so at a distance the T-Rex would have looked more leathery than scaly. So the impression fossils show that the T-Rex didn't have feathers on most of its body and rather its body reminds of the modern day elephants. But still Scientists can't say with 100% certainty that the T-Rex didn't have feathers on at least some parts of its body, possibly its back because it's the only part of the animal that paleontologists lack fossil impressions. But overall we can conclude that the myth about the T-Rex being covered in feathers is false. You have probably watched the Jurassic Park movies and another very persistent myth is that the T-Rex bite was so powerful that it could crush a modern day car. This myth was examined by a group of American paleontologists in 2017. By using a CT scan of a T-Rex skull, they were able to create the most accurate digital reconstruction of the dinosaur's jaws. To date. By looking at the shape and the strength of the muscles of the T-Rex skull, it became evident that as soon as the T-Rex sank its teeth into its prey, it basically exploded. The bones of the prey were pulverized. The digital jaws provided a bite strength of no less than 34,522 Newton, which equals a pressure of 3.5 ton which is more than twice as strong as the jaws on our modern day largest reptile, which is the Delta crocodile. At the same time, the pressure from each individual tooth could reach 30 ton per square centimeter. So a T-Rex would have easily been able to buy through a car and that combined with its large solid peg like teeth, it gets really savage. So the myth about the T-Rex having a very powerful bite is true. Long legs and extremely large thigh muscles make the T-Rex look like it was built for speed. And that's why some scientists have concluded that this giant was able to reach an impressive 72 kilometers an hour. But spoiler alert, 
New studies show that the dinosaur was actually a lot slower than that. Through computer simulation, scientists are now able to take a lot of other factors into account which wasn't included in previous reports. What especially slowed the T-Rex down was the load capacity of the bones of the legs. In 2017, British scientists calculated that if this 6 to 10 ton heavy predator had broken into a run, it would have crushed its own bones. Instead, the T-Rex had to have at least one foot on the ground at all times, so its top speed looks more like 27 km an hour. An Olympic sprinter with a speed of 38 km an hour would have easily been able to outrun the dinosaur. And if you had a bike in hand, you would have easily been able to outpace it on that. Luckily for the T-Rex, the big plant eaters that lived in its vicinity probably had the same limitations. Multiple studies suggest that the T-Rex potential prey wasn't built for speed either and couldn't accomplish much more than 15 kilometers an hour. So the myth about the T-Rex being a speedy fella is false. Multiple scientists have suggested that the killer queen of all dinosaurs She's a killer queen. wasn't even a killer. Aww. According to them, the T-Rex was too slow to catch its own prey, and its amazing sense of smell and powerful jaws made it instead perfectly adapted to sniff out and devour carcasses instead. But this theory doesn't quite hold water. Firstly, it would have been extremely difficult for this giant animal to survive entirely of carcasses. Most modern day scavengers like the hyena even have to bring down their own prey to get enough calories to survive. Secondly, scientists have found a T-Rex tooth in the caudal vertebrae from the plant eater Edmontosaurus. The caudal vertebrae, which is the bones of the tail, has healed since the bite, which tells us that the plant eater was alive when the T-Rex attacked. So the myth about the T-Rex primarily being a scavenger is therefore false. A gigantic killer dinosaur that weighs 8 ton and is 12 meters long and it has arms the size of a human's? Yeah, for centuries scientists have mulled over what exactly the T-Rex used its strikingly small arms for and they have yet to come up with a reasonable explanation for their function. And now multiple scientists believe that the dinosaur didn't use its arms for anything. They believe that at some point in evolution, the jaws replaced the arms function as weapon and tool. And because of that, the head eventually evolved to become bigger and more powerful while the arms just wasted away. But apparently these extreme proportions are only present in the fully grown animals. A fossil of a young T-Rex reveals that in the young animals, the arms were longer and more in proportion to the rest of the body. So it's possible that at some earlier stage of the animal's life, the arms were in fact functional. And then later with age and as the animal evolved into another hunting style, the head became the primary weapon and the arms just lost their function. Scientists now hope to be able to clarify whether the grown animal's arms were in fact functional or not by scanning the bones of a T-Rex arm and looking for signs of stress. And if they're able to find signs of stress, it indicates frequent use of the arm. But so far we can conclude that the myth about the T-Rex having useless arms is partially true. In the blockbuster Jurassic Park, the main characters are able to hide from the bloodthirsty T-Rex right in front of its nose because apparently the animal can't see its prey unless the prey is moving. But scientists don't agree with this theory. The T-Rex had unusually large eyes and judged by the size of the eye socket, the eyeball would have been 15 centimeters in diameter. The modern day animal with the largest eyes is the ostrich and its eyeballs are only 5 centimeters in diameter. Large eyes are usually combined with stellar vision. So scientists have calculated that the T-Rex vision would have been 13 times sharper than the vision of a human. Some modern day reptiles have trouble seeing its prey if the prey is completely still. But this is caused by poor stereoscopic vision, which means that the reptile can't tell the prey from the background. On the other hand, the T-Rex eyes were placed 
perfectly to give it stellar stereoscopic vision. So if you somehow ever meet a living T-Rex, it makes more sense to run or grab a bike and get out of there than it does to try to stand very still. It's not going to end well. So the myth about the T-Rex having poor vision is therefore false. The world's most lethal jaws were as sensitive as your fingertips. In 2017, studies on the T-Rex closest relative, the Daspletosaurus, show that these large predators' heads had lots of sensory nerves. Lots of little pores in the skull around the mouth and nose led nerve endings to the skin, just like in modern day crocodiles. We will probably never know the exact function of the nerves, but when we see similar nerve structures around the nose in modern day animals, the animal is able to register touch, chemicals, and temperature. So scientists have suggested that the T-Rex used its high sensibility to determine whether or not its eggs had the right temperature. And maybe it was even so gentle that it could help the hatchling out of the egg. Today, some crocodiles rub their noses right before mating and it's possible that the T-Rex did the same. So the myth about the gentle Tyrannosaurus Rex is therefore true. So there you have it. That was the seven myths about the T-Rex. It almost makes you want to rewatch Jurassic Park, doesn't it? And maybe even Jurassic World. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, then please press that little thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.